In this tutorial I will address the question of whether you should run a post hoc power analysis for a non-significant hypothesis test. So should you calculate the power after getting a non-significant test result? For instance, you have run an independent samples t-test with a rather small effect size and was not significant. In that situation, many students and researchers run a post hoc power calculation. And technically it's easy to do. For instance, you use g-power, put in the observed effect size, the observed sample sizes in both groups, and calculate the power. And then you could see that you have achieved a power of only 0.09. But should you do this? No, you shouldn't do this. It does not make sense. Because if you have a p-value, the power doesn't give you any additional information. The higher the p-value is, that is, the less significant it is, the lower the power of your test. Or to put it in the words of Hoenig and Hasey, the primary source for this, the observed significance level of a test p-value also determines the observed power. For any test, the observed power is a one-to-one -one function of the p-value. So it doesn't make sense to calculate the power. There is of course one situation where maybe you will have to do it anyway because if your thesis advisor or the reviewer for your paper forces to you to do it. But there is an alternative that at least some researchers recommend. That is, run an ex post power calculation with theoretically or empirically meaningful effect sizes. So not with your observed effect size, but with an effect size that would be empirically meaningful, that is large enough to make a difference, or, and that would be the easiest case, you could use the effect size conventions by Cohen. So in this case of the t-test, you could put in an effect size of d of 0.2, that would be a small effect according to Cohen, and then you could calculate how large the power of your study was to find at least a small effect. How would you report such a result? For instance, due to the sample size, there was only a power of 0.13 to confirm a small effect. This is not useless at least to say, according to some researchers. When to use this approach, that is when to run a post hoc power analysis for meaningful effect sizes? Well, primarily in secondary data analysis. Because in primary data analysis, if you acquire the participants for your study, then of course you should run a power analysis before even acquiring participants in order to make sure that you have a sample size that is large enough. Relevant sources are Gelman, Hoenig and Hasey and Lakens. I put the sources into the description of the video. So if you have to discuss with your thesis advisor or your reviewer, those are possible sources you could give them in order to justify not running a post hoc power analysis. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.